In this video, I want to talk about the kinetic energy of a rigid body and how it's related to the inertia tensor or inertia matrix, if you want. So we consider a very generic rigid body. Last time I defined the point O prime here, which is the origin of some reference frame. And this reference frame is at rest with respect to the rigid body. This point O prime can be any kind of point you want. For example, we can also choose a point coincident with the center of mass, which sometimes it is called G because it's also the center of gravity, if you want, of the rigid body. And uh, this point is defined like this. So let's say we want to describe G with respect to some point O, which is the origin of an absolute reference frame, OG is defined as an integral of OP, where P is a point that belongs to the rigid body. It is a generic body and we have to integrate over the mass of the body. So when we integrate, P will span the entire rigid body here. So we have to integrate OP over the mass of the body and we also have to divide by the total mass of the body. So I will call the total mass of the body M. This is the total mass of the body. And therefore here I can divide by M. 1 over M times this integral will give me by definition the center of, of, of gravity or the, or the center of mass if you want. If you take a look at this, if, for example, if you choose the origin coincident with the center of mass of the body, of course you get GG equal to 1 over M integral GP dm. And this is, of course, equal to the zero vector, right? So this integral here is equal to zero. This is something that we will have to keep in mind because I'm going to use this fact. So now what I want to do is I want to consider the kinetic energy and I will call it capital T of the rigid body. Now if we use some very intuitive definition of this, the kinetic energy is just one half the velocity of the generic point P of the body squared and then we multiply it by the mass dm and we have to sum over all these infinitesimal masses with different velocities in general. So it's an integral because there are differentials. They are infinitesimal quantities. So we have to integrate this quantity in order to get the kinetic energy. And now we are going to rewrite this expression in such a way that you will see the inertia tensor appear or inertia matrix. In this, in this course, we will not discuss tensors. So it's not very appropriate for me to call it tensor. I will just call it matrix because you will see that it will be a matrix. So this is equal to one half integral. Now I'm going to replace this VP here, which I, by the way, I can also rewrite it, for example, like this VP vector dot product with VP. So in here, this is the magnitude squared of the velocity. In this case here, I'm considering the vector. If I put this arrow here, dm. But now I can also use the theorem in, in kinematics that uh, we derived last time, actually the formula that we derived. So vp can also be written as the velocity of another point of the rigid body, and for example that point can be O prime, or it can be the center of mass, and I will choose the center of mass. So it's vg plus the angular velocity of the rigid body cross product with the, the vector gp, and just using the same formula that I derived last time. And I will put it here as well, vg plus omega cross gp dm. Now, you can see that if I multiply out all these quantities, I will get one term like this, it's one half the mass of the body times vg squared, which is the magnitude squared of the velocity of the center of mass, 
And of course, I can integrate that because the velocity of the center of mass does not depend on the body. I mean, I have to integrate over the mass. So the mass can be written as the density of the body dx, dy, dz, for example. So I have to integrate over space. Vg might not be constant, but at the most, it will depend on time. So Vg might depend on time, but it will not depend on these coordinates. So I can integrate that. And then I have plus one half, and then here I will have an integral twice the velocity of the center of mass, dot product with, the, uh, with um, omega cross gp plus omega cross gp squared here. And then I will have to multiply by the infinitesimal mass. Now, you can see that I can also integrate this quantity because vg and omega do not depend on these coordinates here. When I integrate over the entire body, they will be constant with respect to the coordinates, but they might depend on time, but they will not depend on these positions here, x, y, z. So I have to integrate only this part, gp, because p moves, let's say, in the body. So it is a variable because it will describe all points in our body when we integrate. But when I integrate gp, we know that we will get zero from here because uh, we have chosen to describe the motion of the points with respect to the center of mass. So when we integrate GP, we will get zero. So we, this will give us a zero contribution. And I can just cross it like that, cross it out. And therefore here, I can rewrite it as, this is equal to one half M VG squared plus one half. And now I'm going to rewrite this square here, this uh, magnitude squared, by using index notation. This is very useful. A cross product can also be written in index notation. Like, and I can use the Levi Civita symbol, epsilon, and this epsilon has three indices, k, a, b, for example, and I have to sum over a and over b, and here I will have the first vector with the, this index, omega a, so this is the component of the vector omega, and then I will have to use this index for this second vector. So you have gp sub b, where the vector gp, of course, has three components. So it's gp1, gp2, gp3. So a, b, and also k can range from one to, uh, to three. Okay, and I have to sum over a and over b. So it is quite easy to show that we can also rewrite the cross product by using this notation here where epsilon is the Levi Civita symbol. So it is equal to one if KAB, if this triplet is a positive permutation, whereas it is minus one if it is a negative permutation and it is equal to zero otherwise. Then I will have to rewrite something similar here because it should be squared, right? So I can also rewrite it like this, epsilon k, I have to use the same k here because it's as if we take a dot product. So the resulting vector from here, because this is a vector, will depend on the index k. So here, the resulting vector will also depend on k, and since we have k and k, we have to sum over k because it is a dot product. And here I will have to put two different indices, for example, C and D, and then I will have omega C, G, P, D, like this. So it will be convenient to write it in this form, times dm. Now I will use a property of levi civita symbols, in particular the product of epsilon K, A, B, times epsilon K, C, D, can be written as a product of Kronecker deltas, and then take a difference with another product of Kronecker deltas. And this is quite easy to show, and I have done it in other courses, but I'm not going to waste too much time on this. I've also explained this notation uh, more than once, I think, but 
I will not waste too much time on this because okay, this is a derivation. It's quite important if you understand this, but it is not essential. So I'm going to use the results, but I also want to try to be as precise as possible and show you all the things that can be helpful. And this notation here can be very helpful for other vector properties that you can derive, but I'm not going to spend too much on this here. So I will just give you the result here. It is quite simple to prove it. This product of Levi Civita symbols with the same index k here can be written like this. It is delta, Kronecker delta, AC, delta, BD, minus delta, AD times delta BC. So let me just give you some intuition on why this is true. For example, let's take this first product. We have delta AC, which is equal to 1 if A is equal to C. So it is equal to 1 if this index here is equal to this index here. And also we must have that B should be equal to D, otherwise we get 0. So this index should be also equal to this 1. And in that case, we get a 1. And it is quite intuitive to understand why. Because the Levi-Civita symbol can be either minus 1 or plus 1. But if we have uh, that uh, th these two Levi-Civita symbols are equal, for example, even if both of them are minus 1, we will get a plus 1. So that's some kind of intuition. But it is quite easy to prove this relation. Something similar for this one here. So, for example, if you have A equal to D and C equal to B, well, if one of them is a positive permutation, the other one will be a negative permutation because we have changed the position of two indices. Therefore, we will get a minus sign. Okay, And all the other possibilities will give you zero. So, uh, this minus that We'll also take into account the fact that these products here can also be equal to zero. You can try to understand it more thoroughly yourself. Now, we will use this property. So we can rewrite this as one half mass of the body, velocity of the center of mass squared plus one half integral. And then here we have delta AC, delta. BD minus delta AD delta BC times omega A GP B GP D omega C DM. And now I'm going to rewrite it going back to vector notation. This is equal to one half m v g squared plus one half. Now, when you consider these two deltas and you multiply them by this quantity here, you will get omega dot omega, so it's omega squared if you want, times g p squared. But I will rewrite it like this because in this case, for example, you have a equal to c, so you have to sum over a and c, and this is a dot product, omega dot omega. And you also have b equal to d, so you get a dot product between g, gp with itself, so it's gp squared here. And then we get a minus omega dot gp squared dm. And I will also rewrite it like this, so it's equal to one half m v g squared plus one half, and then here I can write it as omega, and I can take it out of the integral because omega does not depend on x, y, z, integral g p squared, and I will also put an identity matrix here, so this is just an identity matrix, it is the matrix one, 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 and all zeros here, outside of the diagonal, dm, and then I will have another omega here because we had omega dot omega. So I can put a parenthesis here, and then I have minus one half 
integral. And I, I, I will still use index notation here. So I have omega dot gp, which I can write it as omega i gp i, and I have to sum over i, and this is squared. So I can also multiply this by omega j gp j. So this is like omega dot gp squared. And just using two different indices because that's how it should be done. dm. But I can also rewrite it like this. So if, for example, I can put omega i out of the integral and omega j out of the integral. And inside the integral, I will have gpi, gpj. But gpi, gpj can also be considered as a matrix because it has two indices. And that matrix is the matrix gpi, gpj, like this. And then, of course, out of the integral, I will have omega i, omega j. But this matrix here can also be uh, rewritten like this. gp, tensor product, gp. It's a definition of tensor product. So when I have a tensor product, for example, and I want to consider two vectors, Let's say that I have the vector, in this case I have GP, so let's use GP. GP transpose GP is a scalar. We know that this is the dot product. This is GP dot product with GP. So this is just a scalar. But what happens if I put this transpose here on the right? GP, GP transpose. Well, in this case we get a square matrix because we have to consider a column vector with three components. And here we have a row vector with three components. So in this case, we will get a matrix, a three by three matrix, when we consider matrix, matrix multiplication. So it's quite intuitive. And this is also denoted like that. It's the tensor product between GP and GP. So I can rewrite this result for the kinetic energy like this. It's one half m v g squared plus one half omega dot product with the integral of g p squared identity matrix minus g p tensor product with g p d m and then I have omega outside of the integral. And this integral right here is defined as the inertia matrix or inertia tensor calculated with respect to the center of mass, G. So because here I have G, therefore I still need to indicate that I is computed with respect to the center of mass. So let me write down the expression for the kinetic energy like this, one half mvg squared plus one half omega dot product with i g, the inertia matrix calculated with respect to g omega, and the inertia matrix or tensor is equal to the integral of gp squared i minus gp tensor product gp dm. So we will see something more on this when we solve exercises, when we solve problems. But for now, this is what we need.